righteous. Say, oh, my son is going, to, he's going to pray to me again very soon. Oh, he's going to be calling because I know he always he prays every time at this time of the night. Do you know that the angels are waiting for you when you're praying? They are waiting for you to come and pray before God. You, you are sleeping. No, they are waiting. Say, ah, regular time. We know it's going to come very soon. At 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, it's going to come and talk to God. We know it. And they are waiting for you. And meanwhile, you are saying, oh, I'm too tired to pray. But the angels are already waiting to give you the blessing. You deny yourself. So let's know this. It's not the sacrifice that matters, but the heart that it brings that brings that sacrifice. You see? So if your hands are good, even if you bring a cup of water, the host of angels will accept it. But if you're a wicked person, imagine you can bring a whole to building. God is not interested in that. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, for he loveth him that followeth of righteousness. So what God is interested in most is in your righteous life. That's what it's anymore. It's not how much money you give to God. God doesn't need your money. He has all the money in the world. But is your life righteous? Hmm? The sacrifice of a broken heart that will not despise. That's what the Bible said in Psalm 51. God loves righteousness. And what does righteousness mean? It means doing the right thing according to God's standards. Isaiah 51, verses 1 and 7. And 1 Timothy 6, 11. 1 Timothy 6, 11. Isaiah 51, as is 1 and 7. Isaiah 51 and 7. 1 and 7, it's 1 and 7, yes. Listen to me. Yes. You who pursue righteousness, uh -huh. who seek the Lord, mm -hmm. look to the rock from which you were earned, yes. mm -hmm. and to the quarry from which you were dug. Yes. Master. Yes. Listen to me, mm -hmm. you who know righteousness, mm -hmm. a people in whose heart is my law, yes. do not fear the reproach of man, uh -huh. not be dismayed at their revelings. Yes, revelings, that's good. Don't be dismayed. So, correction is grievous to those that forsake the way, and he that hear the reproach shall die. Can say the same thing. Oh, first Timothy 1 6, you want to read that? Come on, 6 11. First Timothy 6 11, yes. Okay. First Timothy 6 11. But thou, woman, yes. oh God, mm -hmm. these things. Flavor these things. These things. Mm -hmm. And follow after righteousness. Yes. A godliness. Uh -huh. Faith, love. Uh -huh. Patience. Yes. Meekness. Uh -huh. That's it. Thank you very much. Say, so flee the bad things and follow after righteousness. That's God's will for you and I. Say, so He laid a path for me, a path of righteousness. He laid before me for you to walk in it. God says, be ye perfect as I am perfect, be ye holy as I am holy. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. So again, it's a of correction here. It says, he that hated correction shall die. If you don't want to be corrected, that means you're going to continue with your errors. And one day, you're going to end up in disaster. I remember the story of uh, the armed robber that was about to be killed. Famous story. And uh, he, he said he had the last wish. I said, what? Say, so, well, I will need to have a last wish. Okay, okay, we'll give you a last wish. Say, so, go and call my mother. So they called the mother and said, Oh, I want to tell my mother something. So the mother came just before they executed him. Oh. And the mother came, you know what she did? Oh. He beat off her head. He said, Because if you had trained me properly, if you had disciplined me, I will not be where I am today. Oh. So correction is very important. We must learn to accept correction. As part of life, no, none of us is perfect, you know. So hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more than the hearts of the children of men? Again, you're saying the same thing. God sees our hearts. You know, you can deceive people. You know that you are this, you are that. When you are actually not, but God sees your true motives. For instance, why are you helping this? Why are you doing this? Do you have another motive inside your hearts uh, other than the, the love of God? God sees your real hearts. You know, that's why many people on this earth, on the day of judgment, you'll be surprised that many of the so-called big people that you look up to in the church, they will not be in heaven because God sees their heart. That's why God said that, oh, I said that, uh, I never knew you depart from me, you work of iniquity. And they say, they will not do miracles in your name. They will not cast out uh, demons in your name. So to everybody that casts out demons, they're doing miracles, but to God, they don't belong to him because he knows their true motives. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go otherwise. And the same thing, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, and is a happy heart. Mm -hmm. Somebody's happy, you can see it. 
But the sorrow of heart, his spirit is broken. Yes, somebody is depressed. They cannot talk. You can see the way they're moving. They cannot, everything is slowed down. So we need to pray for the joy of the Lord. You know, you don't have to be happy because of your circumstances. You can be in the worst circumstances and still be happy because the joy of the Lord is in you. See? But some of us, any little problem, we start crying and complaining because really the Spirit of the Lord is not in us. We look upon our circumstances and that's what dictates how we behave. The heart of him that has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. Again, that's obvious. All diseases of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of the merry heart has a continual feast. So anybody who has a happy heart will continually feast in joy. You know, you will not see him looking down and dropping his shoulders. No. It doesn't matter what he's going through. He's still full of joy. That is a sign that God's spirit is in him. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. In other words, it's okay to just have a little, a little house, a little car, whatever, than to have all this wealth and there's no peace. See, all those rich people that you envy, <laughs> if you know the kind of life they're leading, you will not want to envy them. You just see them in the big cars, all these things, say, oh, I wish I had that. If you really knew what they were going through, you wouldn't wish to have what they have. See? Uh, so, you go, you go to stand us. if you have a little, it's fine. Be content with that little you have. After the end of the day, you're not going to take anything from here. Exodus 4 verse 6. Book of Exodus 4 verse 6. And 1 Timothy 6 6. Exodus 4 verse 6. And 1 Timothy 6 6. Exodus 4 verse 6. Yes. One handful of rest is better than two fists, uh -huh. full of labor and striving after weight. That is it. One handful. It's quite two six six. Yes. But but God goodness goodness uh -huh. is uh, with contentment. Con contentment uh -huh. is great is great gain. Yes, yeah. it's great gain. Godliness with contentment, you are satisfied with the little you have. It is a great gain before God. Instead of you wishing to have all this money, all this thing. No. The little is fine. If you're happy, you're godly, that's okay. So you don't be covetous looking for something God doesn't give you. Better is the dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. It's the same thing. You have a dinner of herbs as vegetables uh, for whatever you have it. Okay, then you say, oh, I want an uh, ox, Aaron, but whatever. And there's hatred in that house, you see. So it doesn't mean, it's not all that glitters gold. A, ra a wrathful man stir up strife, but he that's slow to anger appeases strife. We all said the same thing, verse 1. You know, he that's slow to anger, he doesn't get angry, he just keep quiet, keeps checking spirit. He appeases, he puts out the fire. The way of the lazy man is a hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made plain. It's a hedge of thorns because where a lazy person would not walk to feed himself, and so wherever he goes, he's full of trouble. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish man despises his mother. So when a son does well, they always praise the father, right? But when he doesn't do well, they blame the mother. That's exactly what he's saying here. That, you know, so my children make us proud in every way. Going to the book of Matthew chapter 5, we see our Lord Jesus Christ speaking on a mountain. And these are called the Beatitudes. This, this following verses, verses 3 to 10. So we we'll go to them very quickly. He said, he opened his mouth, and say again the power of the word here, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That means those people who are poor in spirit, one, they are blessed, and two, they possess the kingdom of heaven. Now, what does it mean to be poor in spirit? Let's go to Psalm 51, verse 17, Proverbs 16, 19. Very important to know what we're reading. When you say poor in spirit, it doesn't mean you're poor, uh, you don't have money, no. You are spiritually poor, what does that mean? Psalm 51, 17, and Proverbs 16, 19, yes. 51. The sacrifices of God are a mm -hmm. broken spirit, mm -hmm. a broken and a contrite heart. Yeah. Oh God, you will, you will, not, despise. You will not despise. That's it. A broken, yes. 
Proverbs 16. Better is to be of an humble spirit, with the low down to divide the spoil.